Hello again, it's Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and Adobe Photoshop Elements. And here we are in part eight of our eight-part series called Basic Training with Premiere Elements. We have completed our movie. We've added our media. We've trimmed down and split our clips, arranged them in an order to tell a nice story. We've added titles and special effects and music, and now it's time to share our masterpiece with the world. The options to share your movie can be found in the upper right hand corner under export and share. Click on that and you have a number of very nice options. Now, if you don't really want to think too much about the options, you just want to output a nice general purpose movie, you can use quick export. Now this will output a 1280 by 720 video, just a nice size. You can share that online. You can look at it on a computer. You can use it for almost anything. So again, if you just want a general purpose output, this is the one to use. Under the Devices tab, you'll find probably the most options for sharing your video. You can share it as a 4K video, assuming, of course, you've had 4K source material and you've got a 4K project. You can share it at 3840 by 2160. And the option there is to share it as an MP4, an XAVC file. Most cases, you're going to be using high definition. High definition, 1920 by 1080. There also, you've only got the option to save it as an MP4. 1440 by 1080 is hardly ever used. 1280 by 720, as we've looked at under quick export, is a nice general purpose file. And then we've got your standard resolution, 720 by 576, which is the PAL standard, which most of Europe uses, and 720 by 480, which is used in North America and I believe Japan also. Now, under these standard definition options, ironically enough, you'll find the widest variety of options for format sharing. Now, in most cases, you can share as an MP4, but under standard definitions, because these are some of the older file formats, you can share them as DVAVIs, DVMOVs, MP4s, of course, MPEG files, which you would use if you're going to output your video for, say, a DVD, and then load that file into a third-party program like DVD Architect, and even a WMV file. Hardly ever used in most cases, MP4s have become kind of the lingua franca or the, the universal language here for sharing your videos. You see there are also options for sharing your video so that you can watch it on TV. Uh, you can put this on a thumb drive for a lot of high definition TVs and plug it into the TV and save it as an MP4 or an MPEG. You can save it for a mobile device and put it on your phone or your MP3 player or your MP4 player or tablet. You want to save your movie and share it that way. You can see you can save it as a high definition file optimized for those devices. You also have the option, of course, under disk of sharing it as a DVD. Uh, right now we're getting a warning because I don't have any menu markers or menus. So I'm going to select no here and go ahead just for demonstration purposes. And here you see you have the option of burning directly to a DVD disk, in which case if you've added menus and markers, of course, you will get the entire menu system onto your disk or saving it as an ISO file, which I often do to save it to my hard drive. And then from that ISO file as needed, I can generate DVD disks. You also have some cool options here for sharing it online, sharing it to YouTube or Vimeo. And the program has a very nice interface for interfacing directly to these websites. The very first time you use it though, you'll have to click on, once I click on begin share, say under Vimeo, you see that there is some interfacing you'll need to do to log into your account and authorize it. Finally, just one little footnote here under image, you also have the option of saving an animated GIF. Now animated GIFs are five to 10 seconds long. They usually are repeating somebody dancing, somebody making a funny face, and they just kind of run continuously. You can load these to websites or load them up to Facebook or Twitter, and they're kind of cute. And here you can generate that option now directly from Premiere Element. So a lot of great options here for generating your movie. And of course, if you'd like to know all about them, what they all mean and how to use them, <laughs> I hope you'll check out the many tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. And if you want to know everything there is to know about everything in this program, please check out the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Premiere Elements as well as the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. Those books are available at amazon.com. I hope I haven't seen the last of you. This is Steve Grisetti. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you at MoviePix. Take care.